You are watching With a Cup of Tea, a production of This House of Books, an independent bookstore cooperative and tea shop in downtown Billings. Now, here's our show. All right, we're here with Craig Johnson at This House of Books. He just finished reading his Christmas story for 2018. So thank you for being here tonight, Craig. My pleasure, my pleasure. Um, we wanted to ask you a few questions about your creative process. How that you... that would mean that I actually have one. Say, <laughs> I don't know if this is going to be a very good interview or not. <laughs> no, I, you know, it, creative process, I don't know. I mean, boy, <clears throat> wow. It's like asking how, how a watch works, you know, I mean, <laughs> um, maybe we could just talk about the time, I don't know. <laughs> it's, um, yeah, for me, like, the, the, the big thing is always, you know, what's the message, you know, I mean, what are you trying to say, you know, with each book? I mean, that's the, the big thing. I mean, it's it's a little bit different for me in the sense that I'm writing a, a series of books, like, so it's not like I'm reinventing the wheel, um, you know, with every book, like, and uh, it's, it's a lot of the same characters, same location, that type of thing, you know, but it's always going to be a different book, you know, because the message is going to be something that's uh, particularly different or something that I feel very strongly about. Um, it gives me opportunities to speak to a lot of social issues, mm -hmm. um, which I think, you know, in many ways, you know, a lot of crime fiction can do that. Um, you know, with a little bit of a, an, an arm's distance like that. And uh, it gives you that ability like to maybe probe like that what otherwise would be maybe hurtful kind of, uh, you know, subjects like mm -hmm. that in society. But, um, yeah, the big thing is always to me first, you know, what's the message of the book? And then, <clears throat> and then I have to take into consideration that ensemble of characters that, you know, that go beyond, you know, just Walt Longmire in that, you know, what is this story going to do for them? How is it going to compel those characters um, to grow, um, to evolve. Um, Any time like that, you know, you have a series of books. There's always going to be that temptation to fall into a rut, you know, where you become repetitive like that, or um, cliched, stereotyped, or anything like that. And so, to fight that battle, I think you really kind of have to constantly be trying to go out on the thin ice. And mm -hmm. I think that's um, where you're trying to get those characters to grow and to change. Mm -hmm. And you told the audience that you're a pantser. Writing process. No, 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 no. I am a, uh, I am a plotter. I'll get, I, I like to plot, you know, everything down to the nth degree mm -hmm. um, in my books. Like it's simply because if you are going to do, you know, make some kind of a social commentary, one of the biggest statements that you're making in a whodunit is who did it, mm -hmm. you know. And so you need to know not only who it was that did it, but also why. Mm -hmm. um, in many ways, you know, I, I prefer to, ref to to refer to what I write as, you know, why done it, you know, than mm -hmm. they are who done it, you know. Um, and so for me, like, it's important to have all that information and to have all of that to work with before I ever sit down mm -hmm. um, and start writing. Now, that doesn't mean that there won't be moments, you know, of improvisation, you know, in the writing process, you know, where, um, you know, things will change. Mm -hmm. like that because anytime you're writing a book, you know, you, you think you know what the book is about, but until you've written that book, you don't know mm -hmm. what it is exactly it's about. And so you have to be open to those improvisational moments like that where things might change, you know, mm -hmm. because it's more of a journey than it is a destination. And, um, you know, and that's also, you know, where the best writing comes from. Mm -hmm. Like at those moments where you're not quite sure, you mm -hmm. know, why it is that this is happening in this book like that, but you probably need to explore it and, See where it goes. Okay. So, do you spend a lot of time working on one chapter, or do you draft the whole book and then go back and tinker? No, I draft the whole book. Okay. okay. But I'll do an outline for the entire book. Okay. okay. But then I will write chronologically. Okay. Um, I think you know whenever you're trying to play fair, which is you know one of the the, the challenges of writing crime fiction, because you know if you're going to provide the clues, like at to, to give the protagonist the ability to discover what it is that's happening, you also have to be fair, like at, and try and give that same information to the reader, mm -hmm. so that they can have a competition, you know, with the protagonist to see if they can figure out, you know, what it is. That cipher effect of you know what is the X in the formula. Your right. mind automatically goes to that, and uh, and I think you know you need to you know to play fair. Like it's a lot easier to write chronologically because <laughs> if you start jumping around, you're trying to remember. Wait a minute, when did that piece of information enter the storyline? Wait a minute, I thought that was like you can't have that happen in chapter eleven. It's got to happen sooner than that, you know. So so some of the basics kind of you know, there's a requisite to some of it. <laughs> so who are your favorite writers to read? Oh gosh, that that we could go on for four hours, you know, talking <laughs> about all of the writers that I really, really love. Um, I mean, you know, they're they're obviously the classics like that that you know have had a large scale effect on me. John Steinbeck, um, being a number one on that list, um, 
he, his understanding of humanity, like it, and uh, you know the depth of character, and uh, and not backing away, you know, from large scale social issues mm -hmm. like that. You know, really kind of attack that zeitgeist of of what it is that's happening. You know, to me, that's uh, that's the mark of a real writer. One of my favorite things is that uh, there in Salinas, in California, um, where they had the the Steinbeck Center, you know, a museum. Um, they used to burn his books um, back in the 30s, like at, you know, in the in the park there, you know. And so now it's the biggest building in the whole town, like that. And so, you know, I, I think if you're trying to be honest about, you know, not only you know the the characters, but also the, the society um, that you're writing about, you know, then you know, there's going to be a durability mm -hmm. and honesty, I think, you know, to your work that's going to be worthwhile. Um, and I could go down the list, you know, I mean, Charles Dickens is another one that's a, a great influence on me. I think I mentioned George MacDonald Frazier, like that, you know, is a, an author who I admire a great deal. This is mostly because of the humor um, that he's able to work. I mean, humor is hard. Humor is tough. Like, I mean, I, I, whenever I'm doing classes or workshops, like, you know, and students are asking me, they'll say, you know, well, how, how do you get, you know, readers to really empathize with your characters? You know, and I, I'm always like, well, give them a sense of humor. I mean, who do you like hanging out with? You like hanging out with people that make mm -hmm. you laugh? right inevitably the next thing out of their mouth will be yeah but what if I'm not funny and then you're like <laughs> well, funny. you're you're in trouble like it was all I can think you know trying to teach somebody how to be funny is like trying to teach them how to not sweat you know right. it just doesn't doesn't really work very well with it but uh, but yeah and, and they're just I mean there's so many wonderful authors out now I mean Brady Udall like it, I always talk about uh, the miracle of life of Edgar Mint um, and uh, the, the the let's see the lonely polygamist you know one of my favorite authors from over in Idaho and then there's a fellow by the name of Willie Vlauten, um over near Portland, like it, who wrote uh, Lean on Pete, um, you know, Don't Skip Out on Me, I think was the one from last year. Just just remarkable young writers that are coming up that I just can't wait, you know, to see what their next book is going to turn out to be. Um, we really appreciate you coming to our small bookshop. I mean, your visit means a tremendous amount. It's not that small. It, <laughs> it means a tremendous amount to us. Um, and I know you support a lot of small independent bookstores across the West, uh -huh. um, and that means a lot to them. Well, it's important, I think, you know, I mean, you know, anytime I can do anything like that to help support, you know, other writers or, you know, the bookstores, the booksellers, libraries, you know, literary festivals, anything like that, I mean, we're all kind of fighting the same battle, you know, to try and convince people that, you know, reading is really important. Mm -hmm. You know, only those of us who do read, you know, understand just how, what, what an incredible enhancement it is to your, not only your life period, but your day-to-day -day life, how important it can be. And so, you know, for me, the independents become really, really important in the sense that, you know, they have certain advantages um, over a lot of other opportunities, you know, to, to purchase books. I mean, you know, the, the, the statement that I always make, you can always tell, I mean, when you walk into an independent bookstore, it doesn't look like every other bookstore, okay? Um, there's no formula like that, and that's because it's a direct reflection um, of the people who are, are own that bookstore or manage that bookstore, and it should have that unique kind of an imprint, I think. The other thing that's a magic about a bookstore, an independent bookstore, is when you walk in the door and say, I'm looking for a book, they don't automatically reach behind themselves and grab, you know, a copy of whatever book they happen to have three trucks kids of, you know, in the back room. Like, at the, the first thing they ask you in response, you say, I'm looking for a book, the first thing they ask you is, who do you read? Mm -hmm. They're trying to get a read on what your tastes, you know, are. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's incredible. That's really, you know, I mean, it, it's like getting a custom-made suit, you know, or, mm -hmm. a, uh, you know, a, an incredible meal like that that's, that's catered, you know, to your particular tastes. And you can't get past that. That's an incredible thing. Well, we appreciate you. So thank you very much for being here tonight, and Merry Christmas. My pleasure. You too. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>